is derived from Greek word ena and stoma. Ena means two words. Stoma. Stoma means mouth. Two words mouth. That means joining up structure mouth to mouth. This is anastomosis. And importance of this anastomosis is it provides adequate artery supply to the structure which are highly mobile and also it provides alternating pathway for blood vessels, blood flow. If main artery is blocked, so it provides alternating channels or collateral channels. So this is about the term anastomosis. Now we will discuss about the anastomosis around scapula. In scapula, there is two regions where anastomosis takes place. One is around the body of the scapula and another is around the acromion process. So first of all, we will discuss about anastomosis around body of the scapula. So anastomosis around body of scapula, first of all, we make it and down. This is cut. This is outer border, the first ring. Here this. This is greater tubercle, this is lesser tubercle, this is the head of the humerus, this is scapula. Here is acromion process, a coracoid process, and here is acromion process. It is situated on dorsal surface. This is biceptal group. Here is inner lip of biceptal group. And from lower part of lateral border of scapula, the muscle is attached. This muscle is teres major. This muscle is teres major. And here is from here to here, this is subclavian artery, and from outer border of first rib to lower border of teres major, this is axillary artery. And this axillary artery is divided into three parts. By pectoralis minor muscle. So this part is first part. Deep to this is second part. This is third part. So this is proximal to pectoralis minor. This, this part is deep to pectoralis minor. And this is distal to pectoris minor and first part give one branch, second part give two branch and third part give three branch. First part gives one branch that is superior thoracic, second part give two branches that is acromiothoracic and this is lateral thoracic. Acromiothoracic give four branches 
and here is subscapular artery. Third part gives subscapular artery, anterior circumflex humeral, and posterior circumflex humeral artery. Posterior circumflex humeral artery gives a branch which goes upwards, that is acromial branch. So from here to here, this is axillary artery, and this is subcranial artery. Axillary artery is divided into three parts by pectoris minor and subclavian artery is divided into three parts by scalenous anterior muscle. Scalenous anterior muscle divides this artery into three parts. This is first part, deep to this second part and distal to this third part. So first part, second part, third part. First part gives a branch known as thyro cervical trunk. This is thyro cervical trunk. This thyro cervical trunk divides these three branches. This is inferior thyroid, inferior thyroid, this is transverse cervical, transverse cervical, and here is suprascapular. This is supra scapular. So thyroid cervical trunk gives three branches: inferior thyroid artery, transverse cervical and suprascapular artery. This suprascapular artery, it gives deep branch which runs along the medial border of the scapula. This is deep branch of transverse cervical artery. This is deep branch of transverse cervical artery. This is deep branch of transverse And this Suprascapular artery passes here and here is suprascapular notch and this notch is bridged by suprascapular ligament and this artery passes above the suprascapular ligament. From here it goes into supraspinous fossa on the dorsal aspect, from supraspinous fossa, it goes into infraspinous fossa. It gives numerous branches. Here is a deep branch of transverse cervical. It gives numerous branches on the anterior aspect as well as on the posterior aspect of the scapula. This is the anterior aspect. In posterior aspect, I am showing in form of dot dot and another artery. Here is subscapular artery. This subscapular artery gives circumflex scapular branch. This circumflex scapular it gives branch towards the dorsal aspect, towards the ventral aspect. Here is it gives branch towards the ventral aspect. And it also gives branch to uh, into the dorsal aspect. So here is anastomosis between these artery and these artery. This is anastomosis. On subscapular fossa, and same way on the dorsal side, these artery, these two artery, these three artery, these this and this anastomose with each other. The so branches of these three artery anastomose with each, uh, each other and uh, give supply on the anterior aspect and on the posterior aspect. Scapula. So this is anastomosis around the body of the scapula. Actually, this anastomosis is between. This is first part of the subclavian artery. And this is third part, third part of axillary artery. 
this anastomotic channel from here to here that reaches here and goes here. From here to here, it reaches here and goes here. So if this part from here to here, this part is blocked, then this channel provides alternative pathway through which blood circulation completed. So this is the anastomosis around the body of this scapula. And the anastomosis, anastomosis around acromion process. This is acromion process. Here, this here is posterior circumflex humeral artery. It gives a acromial branch. Here is suprascapular artery. It gives acromial branch. And here is acromial thoracic artery. It gives acromial branch. And all three branches anastomose with each other and form the anastomosis around the acromion process. And this anastomosis is between first part of subclavian artery between first part and second part and third part. Posterior circumflex is a branch of third part. Acromiothoracic is a branch of second part. And here, suprascapular, suprascapular, this acromial branch of suprascapular, it arises from the first part of subclavian artery. So if this obstruct here, it provides alternative channel. So this is anastomosis around the body of the scapula, around the acromion process of the scapula. Thank you.